Coming back to our top stories, vaccination, top of mind today. More provinces in this country are making more people eligible for third doses. Hearing that in plans from B.C., Quebec, Saskatchewan, New Brunswick this morning. B.C. even preparing to provide a fourth round of vaccinations for people with compromised immune systems. PEI already looking at that. But that is the backdrop here. The big story is preliminary, and I emphasize preliminary, research out of South Africa on the Omicron variant. The first lab results out of South Africa looking at the results in 12 people. This is research that's not peer-reviewed, but it is published and is apparently going to be uh, peer-reviewed. As the world, with vaccination, really tries to understand now what we are dealing with in this new variant. And so the findings have been widely released, widely commented upon. And we're going to get some comment this morning from Dr. Samir Gupta, who's a regular contributor to our program, a respirologist and associate professor in the Department of Medicine at the University of Toronto. Good morning, Dr. Gupta. Morning, Heather. I'm really glad to have you here because there's a lot of breaking news on the Omicron variant. And let us begin. You're going to sort of walk me through, walk our viewers through what we're learning from this. A study, as I said, small, preliminary, but takes a look at one of the key questions, which is whether the existing vaccines offer protection against the Omicron variant. What are you seeing in this South African research? Yeah, so, so I'll start by saying that the news we've seen from South Africa and then another study that's been released by Pfizer generally is positive. Um, there's a bit of a relief uh, in the scientific community. And what these are the first types of studies we'll see. Uh, what you're doing is you're taking blood from people who have been vaccinated, so they have those antibodies. And in a lab, you're incubating that blood, blood basically with the virus to see how effective those antibodies are at neutralizing the virus in a lab setting. So the South African study did this with 12 different people's blood. And what they found was first good news, there is neutralizing activity from existing antibodies, from existing vaccines against Omicron. So that's good, there's good neutralizing activity. But now the bad news is that that neutralizing effect was less, in fact, about 40 fold less than the parent, than the original strain. So that's significant, right? That's a significant that drop in protection. Um, well, so here's the thing. It's, it's a big drop, and it's a bigger drop than we saw with previous variants. Right. But one of the caveats with this kind of information is that we don't have a threshold. I can't say to you 25 times less, 40, 50. What is the difference in neutralization activity in a lab that will correlate for me to say, well, we won't be protected in the real world? And you may recall with Delta, we had very similar studies early on showing a drop in neutralizing activity in the lab, and there was a lot of concern. But the real world ended up being quite different. We were well protected with existing vaccines against symptomatic disease and particularly against severe disease. So we don't have that straight line between a drop in neutralizing activity and what it means for real world protection. Okay, that is a very important thing to say. But as you say, given even though there is a drop, there is a positive response. There is a relief in the scientific community because the expectation for many was that there would be no protection afforded by vaccine against this new variant. So they were pleased to see that it was better than they expected. Now bring in what we're getting from Pfizer because the company itself, and let's be clear about this too as we talk about this information. This is information released by Pfizer, released in a press release, but also released on a business channel in the United States, so ostensibly to investors. That's important to keep in mind. But what we're hearing from Pfizer is that it's done its own lab studies, and it's finding that three doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine neutralize, that's the word, neutralize the Omicron variant. So tell me what you're seeing in this. Yeah, so so just uh, this kind of dovetails with the South African data. So one other thing about the South African study, half of those subjects, six of them had had previous infection. So previous infection followed by two doses of vaccine. And we already know, and this was shown in the South Afri African data too, that people with prior infection after vaccination have in fact much higher levels of antibodies. So it's a, sort of an extra boost when you're vaccinated after natural infection. And what they determined is that in those folks, because they started higher, their neutralizing activity was better. Um, and so it started to create this, this thinking already with that study that more is better, more antibodies are better. What Pfizer did is they went and said, we're going to study people who actually had boosters, which the point of boosters is to increase antibody levels. And they indeed showed that although there's a significant, again, drop in neutralizing activity in people who have had two shots 
In the Pfizer study, it was 25-fold. In the South African study, it was 41-fold. So you're already seeing that variability because these are small studies. So where that number lands is already you know, going to change. Uh, but that reduction in neutralization was gone. It was mitigated in people who had had boosters. So again, building this argument that more is better and very reassuring that in their sample of people who had had boosters, the neutralizing activity was actually protected. It was maintained. One other piece I'll mention we didn't have from the South African data. When you, when you do these, these basic neutralization studies, you're only looking at antibody protection. You're not looking at the other types of protection that we have from vaccination, including B cell and T cell immunity. Those things are harder to measure. Pfizer has looked at for T cells, our T cell immunity, um, how many of the parts of the spike protein that T cells induced by vaccination are able to recognize on Omicron compared to the parent strain. And it turns out about 80% of those areas that our T cells are protecting against are still present on Omicron, which suggests that our T cell immunity will be preserved. And that's a very good thing. That's a very reassuring thing. Again, all this needs to be looked at in the real world. How does this translate to real world protection? But two very reassuring things. One is that at high levels of antibodies, there's good neutralization. Two is that our T cell immunity may be preserved. And that's another important mechanism that protects us in the real world. One other line that stood out in the Pfizer release was that two doses may still induce protection against severe disease. So perhaps that too is a reassuring element. Again, this is uh, information being put out by the company itself. So all of this makes me wonder, we're hearing from the company, we're hearing from researchers now in this very preliminary form. Does it answer fully the question how concerned we need to be about this variant, or are we still waiting for what you've just mentioned a couple of times, more real-world data? Yeah, you know what, it's it's a first look at neutralizing activity, and that's all we can take from it. It means that there's gonna be neutralizing activity, so I'll take it as a positive, and again, I'll, I'll caution on trying to draw that line between what you see in a lab and what protection you see in the real world. Mm -hmm. I think that there will be a lot of temptation to say now everybody needs boosters, um, but we need to see what happens in the real world. Uh, there was a similar call with Delta. There was a talk about making a Delta-specific booster. Turned out in the real world, the protection was just fine. Um, and it's a bit of a, you know, we've talked about this before, but it's, it might be a bit of a circular argument here. We might be chasing our tails because there's been a lot of discussion about the fact that we haven't shared vaccines with parts of the world that need them. And they are having tons of viral transmission, tons of viral replication. And as a result of that, these kinds of variants emerge. And now if the response to this is to say, let's double down and use up all our supply in rich countries to give boosters, rather than to share that supply to prevent this from happening again, I think that's a bit of a paradoxical response. We really need to understand in the real world, do we need boosters or are two shots enough, at least against severe disease? Does it buy us some time to distribute vaccines to the rest of the world and, and sort of find a balance between our booster campaigns and sharing? So you pointed to the exact last two points I wanted to make. Speaking on the boosters, as you just have, even as we report this morning on more and more provinces expanding eligibility and even BC and PEI looking at fourth doses for those who are immunocompromised. But you've also raised an issue that I'd like to, to conclude on with you, Dr. Gupta, and that is the question of a vaccine specific to the Omicron variant. As you said, there have been attempts or at least examination of whether that was needed with previous variants. We're hearing again from Pfizer today that they are working on this now and could have one ready, they think, as early as March, if necessary. Do we have indica any indication to this point in these early findings whether there seems to be a need for it? Yeah, I mean, there's two things that will determine that, and one is what we've talked about, whether protection from existing vaccines is sufficient. We still don't know that. Those are the, That's the next wave of studies we're going to see mostly out of South Africa, but also out of other countries that are seeing a lot of cases. Who's getting this? Is it vaccinated people disproportionately? Is it people with prior infection? And how sick are they getting? Is there still good protection against severe disease? That information is forthcoming. The other piece that's really important in terms of determining whether the world needs a booster against Omicron specifically is does Omicron become dominant? It, it's starting, it seems like it is in South Africa, but that might be very specific to the epidemiology there, the fact that they're very under-vaccinated there. Uh, maybe it's a sampling bias. They're sampling a certain chains of transmission disproportionately. We need to see if this happens in other parts of the world. Uh, and if and only if it becomes dominant, if out-competes Delta, 
does it become relevant to talk about the possibility of an Omicron-specific booster? And again, only if existing vaccines are not protecting against significant disease. So too early to say, but I would say today's news should offer a sigh of relief for the world. Let's, you know, we have neutralizing activity. It's a good sign. We go from there and look at the clinical data, what's happening in the real world. Thank you so much, Dr. Gupta. Breaking news, very important, and you've helped us understand it so much better. I appreciate it tremendously today. My pleasure. Take care.